Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Jesus reminds us to watch for the signs of his return. Today, we will explore further what we are seeing in our times that line up with what signs he said would indicate the potential of the end and his return. We will also discuss the practical meaning of this as we watch and as a remnant, prepare as he so leads. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, Here we are on End Times Friday, uh, going into the second week of October. Uh, So uh, lots of things happening and uh, really uh, interesting times going on. We've had lots of discussions about Israel and uh, the economy and uh, amazing things going on. There's, uh, by the way, there's, uh, I think we discussed a little bit about the, uh, what's going on with Israel and Saudi Arabia, Uh, but um, uh, Netanyahu, this this is really, it's both uh, kind of interesting and uh, amazing, but um, He's working with Saudi Arabia Mm -hmm. uh, to try to develop a peace treaty with Israel that includes um, the Palestinians that are in and around Israel who have a, uh, by the way, they are tend to be Shiites and Saudi Arabia is part of the Sunni group, but they understand that they have to get along with the Shiites. So. And, and the Shiites are already in Israel. So they, mm-hmm. they, they occupy, they have a vote. Um, and of course they get bombarded uh, with attacks from the South and the North, um, right. you know, from uh, uh, the different uh, Shiite factions. Um, and, uh, and they come after them. Hamas was called Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, both from Lebanon and then from uh, the uh, West Bank, uh, not the West Bank, but the uh, Golan Heights. They uh, uh, they attack them and uh, with missile, mm-hmm. missiles and things, you know, which is why they have that Iron Dome. But uh, Netanyahu uh, is is speaking about the peace treaty uh, mm-hmm. and saying we're working on it and uh, we're trying to get there. We think we can get there. It'll be a milestone, uh, which, by the way, uh, fits into the prophecies from Daniel that there'll be a, uh, uh, ultimately, uh, the uh, one world government keeps that peace treaty and then and they break it in the middle, which is the, you know, the abomination of desolation. So mm-hmm. a peace treaty is developed ahead of time. Um, so that's a peace that has to take place. So there is something, coming up, yeah. something there. Yeah. Um, anyway, okay. so Netanyahu, that's he's speaking about it. And um, he says, yeah, he says, I've I've told uh, Saudi Arabia, um, I'm going to set before you blessing and cursing, life and death. Yeah. Uh, choose life. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's trying to say the, the Shiites are choosing death. And, mm. you know, could you choose life and then help us promote life uh, and blessing in the area uh, by... Uh, doing what's what's good for all of us for life not to promote death so it's an interesting it's interesting that he's using that biblical verse in uh, deuteronomy 30 uh which by the way he's a good student of the bible and his family is too Mm -hmm. so uh it's really interesting anyway that's that's happening right now uh they're in discussions uh they they are both sides are talking about it uh which now it's public you know because it has been private for a long time but now it's public so uh, it's really, it's really interesting, you know, what's going on in Israel and any again, reaction from like, how do the Palestinians feel about Israel and Saudi Arabia working on this? Well, they, um, Saudi Arabia and particularly Israel has stated, um, if whatever we come to continues to put us in jeopardy and under attack, Mm-hmm. we're not going to accept it. Right. Um, and your demands that are trying to put you in that position 
uh, we're not going to accept. So they've already told that to the Shiites. And the Shiites are in a place where they're considering, um, should we hold fast to our true fundamental beliefs, which is I want to wipe Israel off the map mm -hmm. and, and come against them? Uh, or should we compromise and agree to certain things hmm. uh, and get something rather than nothing? Because we've never gotten anything. Uh, right. And Israel, actually, through Netanyahu, by the way, he's, hold, he's held firm. And he's been very clever, by the way. Um, he says, yeah, I'll meet with you. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll negotiate with you. Um, uh, remember, um, I'm not going to agree to certain things that you hold as, as primary to you. And you've mm -hmm. always held them as primary to you, which has come, come against us. I, I can't agree to that up front. You know? So if you want right. to, let's go. So when he says that, <laughs> they never come. Um, hmm. Because, well, we're not going to give in on our demands, which are to right. an annihilate you off the face of the earth. Um, and uh, they're trying to establish a what they call a two-state solution independent of anything that Israel wants, but in, Israel has control of it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're trying to get the world, you know, the U.S. and, and, and others to, to come in. Um, uh, so um, they, you know, they've made that statement. Um, but because of that, he's been very clever. Well, this time you got the Saudis trying to work with them and say, hey, guys, mm -hmm. you'd be better off getting something than nothing. Mm -hmm. And by the way, um, because, and this is actually a, a part of the actual Quran itself, is that um, in order to achieve the objective of the Quran, which is to get rid of all the infidels around the world, actually, right? Um, you can use deception. Oh, uh, interesting. It's, it's right in the Quran. You can use deception. Wow. It's, it's legitimate, you know, and so... Um, even if they agree to certain things, it doesn't mean they'll honor it. Mm -hmm. um, but at least there's some movement and they'll have a world around it. Even the Saudis who will say, wait a minute, you agreed to this mm -hmm. and we got to maintain it. And, and the force of that combination of the Saudis, the Sunnis, you know, which is Egypt and Jordan and um, uh, part of Iraq, Saudi Arabia, several smaller countries around, that's a pretty formidable group. Mm -hmm. that would also stand up because, hey, you agreed to something. Uh, right. So it'll be, inter it'll be interesting to uh, play it out. So uh, we'll see. Uh, we've been uh, discussing and want to talk about the economy um, and the opportunity of what, what that means to us as we seek wisdom for that. Um, I'm going to bring you a little bit of an update uh, and then we can kind of get into it. Uh, remember, and um, I just had a great discussion at a retreat, actually, we just did retreats, and they were asking about uh, the end. And um, uh, somebody was saying that um, uh, Christ uh, said to pay attention so that um, we can lift up our thinking to uh, uh, changes and uh, global things that happen that impact us, even though it may not be the end. Um, mm. so, um, we are to be, are we, in other, in other words, he wanted to use it as a, broaden your thinking to, to beyond what you are engaged in, in the moment and mm -hmm. thinking and thinking that that's always going to be the case, uh, mm. that all these global changes occur and, and then you have to decide how to handle it, you know? And so, you know, for example, um, you know, think of, uh, England. Uh, when um, World War II broke out, right? Um, they didn't. They weren't engaged in it. They weren't part of it. Uh, they weren't part of the mainland. As far as they were, they were concerned. We'd like to just stay who we are. And if you guys want to fight over over the mainland, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> Germany, Germany comes after them. Right. Um, they didn't plan on it. But they could they could begin to understand where where they're headed, and they're going to have to make a decision here. What are they going to do about this? Are they going to mm -hmm. are they going to capitulate, 
or are they going to stand up and fight? Of course, they stood up and fight. Um, and they did that almost independently of anybody else in the world um, until we had Pearl Harbor hit us. Mm-hmm. And then we got drawn into that, which, for, you know, fortunately for England, we did. Because right. if it wasn't for the United States, there's no way that, that anybody would have won World War II against Germany. Um, and by the way, then against Japan. <laughs> so, uh, right. It was really interesting. But um, things change. Uh, and so as we look at this together, it's we're going to look at it both for what would it mean if this was the end or headed toward the end? Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll actually do that second. Or if it's just another significant change in the cycle of things. Mm-hmm. That, that he wants us being alert to. To be alert to and to seek his wisdom mm-hmm. for what's coming up and how do we handle this and what do we do about this? Because um, he said, I can still deliver to you the covenant mm-hmm. despite all the circumstances around you. And uh, the one thing that we've noticed uh, because of the rapid change, and we're talking uh, culturally, for example, uh, Christians have, you know, if you can just think of the last, you know, five to 10 years, would, would you say that the culture change against Christian principles has accelerated? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. I mean, it, 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 to me, I, I would say, see, it's, it's at lightning speed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going at lightning speed. Um, so that's changing. Um all the economics change. We had a great, interesting enough, we had a pretty long period when the recovery came from 2008, which is around 11 or 12. Um, we had that crash in eight, survived that for a couple years. And by the way, lots of unemployment and lots of economic hardship. Uh, but from that point, from 12 to about 22, 10 years, Mm-hmm. Um, there was a gigantic expansion economically, favor economically. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, of course, we had COVID in the middle of, or at the end of that, which, which threw a hook in things. Uh, but the uh, res- the uh, national, international central banking kept the interest rates pretty much at zero. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could buy, a, get a mortgage, you know, for two, two and a half, three percent. Right. Um, which stimulated, you know, home, home buying, home building, economy, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it was, it was really remarkable. Well, um, in the last now year and a half, two years, uh, there's been um, uh, the economy. And, and remember what Casey talked about is because of the regulations, um, it's, it's a suppressor of the growth mm-hmm. of, of the economy. So left normally we would still probably be in a positive economy just because of numbers, but because of the regulations that are being put on and, and taking away uh, the, what we call marginal uh, disposable income, mm-hmm. people then don't buy as many things and that keeps the economy kind of at flat. Right. Uh, the pressure is at flat. And then from there, can, it can go negative, which is called a recession. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all about what, you know, what the, uh, uh, people in the country or in the world believe. Uh, and so, uh, for example, China is starting to have its own recession, uh, because they, they built up their economy through, uh, government funding. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're all of a sudden at a point like with the real estate are starting to collapse. Um, so they're, and they're having less demand because of, what happened with COVID, there's less purchasing of, of Chinese goods. So their whole economy is really having trouble and maybe could be, actually there's potential to be collapsing um, oh, all, all by itself. Um, so we have all these factors uh, that are going on that are taking a, uh, in the United States, taking an economy that has been basically uh, put into a flat position at its best. And now it potentially is going to move into a fairly significant negative condition, mm-hmm. uh, which would be a recession. Um, and of course, they've tried to redefine it. So even if it's negative, they, they, want, they don't want to call it a recession. They don't want to call it that, right. That's uh, not good for political things, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, 
when you look at the global economics uh, uh, as it relates to, particularly to America, um, there's uh, agencies around the world that rate uh, the, uh, that economy, that nation, um, in terms of credit worthiness. Mm -hmm. uh, America, literally for you know decades and decades and decades, has been A plus, right? Uh, because of our our ability, you know, to have uh, uh, economic gain and to handle our problems. Well, we were just uh, downgraded mm -hmm. uh, by uh, these institutions, um, and our credit rating has been reduced now uh, into the B plus category. And going from an A to a mm -hmm. B is a gigantic thing. Um, and right. so what that does is, first of all, causes people concern, should I actually be investing in the United States? Because, and, and credit worthiness is about the ability to pay things back. Mm -hmm. um, and, our, and what's happening, see, the reason they're doing that is that our debt load has gotten so high in the last five to 10 years that it's now outstripping our gross national product. Mm -hmm. um, and the burden of that coupled with inflation. Um, so now things cost more. So the remedy for that is raising interest rates mm -hmm. to try to suppress that inflation uh, because of lower demand, which would then bring, you know, bring back uh, better pricing. So what's happened is that we've, we've doubled, literally doubled our debt in the last 10 years. So we're now over mm -hmm. 30, $31 trillion in, in published debt. We have off, what we call off balance sheet debt of nearly $100 trillion. Uh, but wow. that, that's all been part of the you know, social security system and all that. Um, on, the, on the published debt, um, the ability to pay it back at very low interest rates was, was manageable. Mm -hmm. But now the interest rates are rising, 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 so that um, as you, uh, and you have to what's called roll the debt. So the, the treasury notes, for example, you know, they have, you know, 30 day notes, 60 day notes, 90 day notes, 120 day notes, 300 day notes, you know, two year notes. But when they expire, Mm -hmm. You either you either got to pay them back, or you got to pay them the new interest rate. Right. Which is what usually what they do is just roll it. What's called rolling it, and say, yeah, sure, you know, I'll keep it there, uh, particularly since you can't pay me back anyway. <laughs> uh, but I'll have more interest rate. Well, the interest then takes more of the national, uh, you know, ability to pay, mm -hmm. and the budget. And because our government, here's why they were rated lower, is that our government in our, in our whole system, president, uh, Congress, uh, judiciary, are not willing to focus on managing that, that situation. Mm -hmm. So what they do is, okay, we got to pay more for interest, which means we have less to pay for other things, but, <laughs> and this is where the circle gets, gets bad, um, we're going we're gonna to keep all those other payments anyway. And knowing that we have to go borrow mm -hmm. money from Add those- a higher interest rate. That's gonna, that, that's gonna promote even more of a stress and mm -hmm. the circle is gonna get worse and worse and worse. And that's where we are, are at the moment is that we're, we're kind of in this negative cycle mm -hmm. that is promoting itself to get worse. Right. Um, and, put the, and put the pressure on uh, you know, the United States, which is why the people who rate these uh, ra ratings, credit ratings, re lowered it mm -hmm. and said, hey, we see what's happening here. Um, you know, and, and you got to got to be careful. Um, uh, so the the economics of it all, you know, are going to be problematic uh, in terms of, you know, where does that go? So real quick, just, you know, if these ratings come down, a lot of the investors in the U.S. dollar, for instance, come from foreign countries. So is yep. that really where this, they're now seeing this lower rating, so then they're going to be less likely to want to invest in the U.S.? How does that, how does that play out in a practical sense? Um, what happens is that, yes, the demand lessens, because mm -hmm. I'm a little bit concerned about it. So it's right. not, a, oh, yeah, sure. 
um, I'm going to put my funds there, which has always been favorable to them. Um, and mm -hmm. and they they think you know that they can get it uh, you know covered. Uh, so there's a little bit less demand. Mm -hmm. With less demand, what happens is that uh, the interest treasury, what's called the interest on the treasury notes, rises mm -hmm. because I have to attract people who would get a better return with me, even though there's risk to it. Right. Um, and then they attract them and say, OK, because you're giving such a good rate, um, I'll go ahead and put my money in or roll roll the money mm -hmm. in. Um, uh, there's a uh, there's a great movie. Uh, it was um, back in the 80s um, and it actually portrayed potentially what could be true today. Hmm. Uh, and it's called Rollover. Uh, mm -hmm. It was uh, Jane Fonda, Chris Christopherson. And uh, they were portraying the manipulations that were going on by the central banks. And everybody assumed that no matter what, all of those people that, all those foreign countries that had money in the United States treasuries would roll it over any, any, in, in any mm. case. And they basically had a movie that showed there becomes a moment where they don't. Um, mm. And when they didn't, it collapsed the system. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, so, and we're, we can see, so back there it was kind of fiction. Now but, we can see a scenario but, but today, where that would play out. It's like, yeah. Well, that could, that could be part of, you know, part of the process uh, uh, of what, the, what they do. So um, as you look at, you know, what is happening, and remember underneath it all, is a uh, group um, and it's, the group is getting <laughs> bigger. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, World Economic Forum right. is, is, is a group that actually brings all the basic government and business uh, economic uh, forces, leadership mm -hmm. together and they've all agreed we're gonna do one world government. That's what that's what we're headed to. That's the goal. That's right. the goal. Um, and because of that, and because they're t attached with the Rothschilds, who basically control the central banks around the world, is that uh, it's easy to basically plan that out mm -hmm. uh, at a point where it would happen. And let me let me try to explain that. Um, and by the way, the United Nations just came out <laughs> this week, and they voted. Mm -hmm. that we are going to, uh, to attempt to support and promote one world government in seven years. Wow. So 2030, which was, the, that's the goal of uh, WEF was that's, one world government. That's the state of WEF. And yeah. so, okay, so there's, there's a um, interesting piece of information. Hmm. Uh, remember Jesus said, watch the signs. Right. Receive information and understand it. And that you got the WEF saying 2030. You just now, now you've got the UN saying 2030. Yeah, that they're saying we're going to facilitate that one world government uh, mm -hmm. because we need global solutions right. to, to the problems that we have. Um, so um, and remember, uh, and this is this is as we put everything together. Uh, this is not a Hitler Germany uh, scenario this where is everybody willingly coming together to one world government. It's the whole world agreeing uh, openly and willingly mm -hmm. that this is the best solution. Right. And we want to, which means we surrender our sovereignty. So we will no longer be uh, under the governance of the United States. We'll be under the governance of the one world government mm -hmm. that will uh you know basically be subordinated to that one world government um and so when you think of um the willingness to do that mm -hmm. um it can't be by force right um it really can't be even by by political ideology uh because we know and every other place has it around the world, even in China and Russia. There's factions that don't agree with the political right. stuff. Um, and it's not an easy thing to just say, sure. 
Mm -hmm. um, unless there's a motive to do so. So it's not by force. It's not by uh, political persuasion because you're, you're not going to get there. It would, it would have to be, and this is what people need to understand, it has to be economic. Mm -hmm. um, because what's universal to right. everybody is, is how do I live and how do I, I handle life economically, financially. Right. And so it's really a, a crisis that supersedes ideology. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, and we saw it occur um, with uh, the COVID mm -hmm. is that um, while we were still sovereign, when COVID hit, the WHO, the World Health Organization, and then the Associated mm -hmm. Health Organizations like the FDA for us and the CDC, um, all stated worldwide that uh, because of the what they call a pandemic that now affected mm -hmm. everybody, you have to not go to work, you got to wear masks, you got to socially distance, you can't go to restaurants, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You got to, you know, ideally, um, you know, you can't even gather socially. Um, and uh, the one, the one, I know one companies that, that made great was the mass people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they made a lot of money uh, because it was worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a willingness to surrender to that worldwide. Okay. So think about, I mean, just think about that scenario. Um, what would you say was the motive that everybody willingly said, okay. Well, there was this big level of fear okay. <laughs> that was going on. Okay. Obviously. So there was a fear that they believed. Mm -hmm. And if I believe that fear, I take action against that fear. Mm -hmm. um, I, for what? For my own benefit. Right. Um, and of course, over time, it proved to be, you know, you really, you really didn't need to socially distance. You know, you really didn't need to necessarily wear a mask. It was actually as good to get it as it was not to get it uh, for the future. Uh, so there's there's all kinds of things that came out of that. Um, and then people came to a place where they kind of got tired of it um, mm -hmm. and they started, you know, pushing against it. But for a while, everybody willingly did it right. uh, out, of, out of fear and concern. Well, um, as we get into the next session next week, we're going to talk about um, what then economically with these things happening, and I'll, tell, I'll tell, talk about a few more, could lead to a, mm -hmm. an issue where something happens and because of what happens economically, mm -hmm. the world willingly uh, uh, basically embraces a one world government who provides solution to the problem, mm, to the problem. Right. Um, and then we go across political party and we go across ideology. Um, mm -hmm. And actually remember one world, think about one world government means that no individual country now controls anything. Right. Uh, including China and Russia. Uh, now they're still there and they're still going to function just like we will, because it'll be like, you know, we're in the United States under the federal government. Mm -hmm. Well, you live in New Hampshire you're still subject to New Hampshire right. stuff and you live Which is slightly different than Texas or yeah. Colorado or yeah. yeah. And you live in, um, uh, you know, uh, a city uh, in New Hampshire and they've got things. So they function mm -hmm. subject to the United States federal, federal right. government. Um, so that's how it's going to look, you know? So it's, mm. when we say one world government, it's going to be, there'll still be local things that have to happen. Mm -hmm. But it'll be under this new system under an umbrella of the of the new system, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about. So we'll talk about that next time uh, cool. and um, and then get into these economic issues. And then how do we start to evaluate them and look at seeking God for wisdom relative to ultimately it does affect us. Mm -hmm. We have to understand how it affects us uh, and it'll be individual and there's no uniqueness to it or no uh, uh, universality to it. Uh, we just have to understand it. So we'll, we'll get into that next time and uh, it'll be, it'll be really interesting. Excellent. Fascinating. Well, thank you so much for sharing this with us. If this has brought questions to you, certainly send them into, into us at questions at afjministry.com. And we would love to talk about it. 
and we look forward to seeing you next time. Yep, we'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.